Good day, everybody. I'm Dr. Sanjay Sanyal, Professor and Course Director of Neuroscience. This program took several years to create, and we presented this in the International Business and Education Conference in Washington. I would draw your attention to two key words, interactive digital media and neuroscience. As you can understand, the brain is a very difficult subject to teach. So here's a quick roadmap of this presentation. First, we will tell you the various views of the brain, then the brief steps by which we created this project, and what were the results of the project, and then you'll get a chance to experience it yourself, and then you'll see how it is relevant in the present contemporary context and what the carry home message is. When we are teaching the brain, not only is it very difficult for us to teach, but it's very difficult for the students to understand. And they keep racking their brains. Why? The simple reason is the brain does not give up its secrets easily. And as a matter of fact, sometimes they say that you should have a third eye within your head in order to understand the brain. And at the end of the day, the head starts spinning. So teaching the brain is a nerve wracking experience, both for the professor as well as for the students. These are a few quick snapshot views of transparent 3D images of the brain. Now, this is not a lesson on neuroscience, so I'm not trying to teach you the human brain. This is just to give you an idea how complex the human brain is. And what I'm showing you here is less than 0.01% of what is there to be known inside the brain. So therefore, when we teach the human brain, we do not teach them straight away in a three-dimensional mode because this is going to be very overwhelming. Instead, what we do is we take certain selected slices, imaginary slices through the brain. So first, let me orient you to what are these various slices that we use. Take a look at this human body. And this is an imaginary plane. This is a median plane, which has sliced the human body imaginary in the midline. And this is called a sagittal view. So this red line demonstrates the same thing of the human brain. And once you slice the human brain in this, you get this view of the brain or this view or this view. This is known as the sagittal view created by an imaginary median plane slicing right through the middle of the human body. The next view that we use is another, this is the human body and this is another imaginary plane. And the same thing for the brain. This is the transverse at the axial plane and the view of the brain that you get is called the axial or the transverse view. So we use basically a sagittal view and we use a transverse or an axial view to study and teach the human brain. Now, this, these views are not only relevant from the point of view of teaching and learning the brain, but they're also of clinical significance, which I shall tell you a little later. At an earlier project, we had created a brief video of the brain, serial sagittal views, and another brief video of the brain, serial axial views. And these are the two YouTube links. At a later time, you may have a look at them. Right now, let's proceed to the project itself. Basically, this project, what we did, we tried to merge the sagittal views with the transverse axial views. The first step, the first step of the project was we created horizontal lines at intervals of 10 millimeters on a scaled paper. We took an already available sagittal view of the brain from the National Library of Medicine, National Institute of Health, Bethesda, Maryland website, which was freely available in the public website. Both images were scaled to the same size on a digital platform. And then we superimposed this image on top of this image. But before that, we did something else. We also took several axial slices of the brain at precise millimeter intervals from the scalp surface going deeper and deeper down. These were also available from the same website. They were freely available in the public media and they were precisely labeled 10 millimeters, 20 millimeters, 30 millimeters, 40 millimeters deeper and deeper from the scalp surface. So this is a picture where you can see that these lines have already been superimposed on a part of the sagittal view of the brain, which I showed you earlier. And these are some of the, the transverse views of the brain. 
The next step of the process was each of these lines were accurately labeled with the number which they represented from the scalp surface. So as you can see, this number 70 represents that this line is 70 millimeters from the scalp surface. This is 100, this is 140, this is 220. They represent the respective millimeters from the scalp surface. And each of these numbers within hyperlinked to the exact corresponding transverse slice. So, so therefore, this is 140 millimeters from the scalp surface. And if we were to click here, it will take us directly to this transfer slice, 140 millimeters. And after the student has studied all the levels and all the structures which are labeled here, the student can click to the top and it will bring him or her back to the original video. Similarly, if the person clicks on 240 millimeters from the scalp surface, it will take the person to this level, which is exactly 240 millimeters from the scalp surface. And then after the student has studied everything, the person can click top and he'll come back to the initial general view. And the person can go back and forth and there are question marks here which are also hyperlinked and the student can study as he or she pleases. Before I actually demonstrate the thing to you, let me just tell you what were the results of our work. We created two standalone files. One of them was 17.5 megabytes, the other was 26 megabytes and it was available offline. It did not require internet connection. It was easily portable on a PC or a mobile device and the qualitative feedback from students was very good. We also did a seven point comparison with eight other digital media based on these parameters from these institutions and from these uh, technologies. And we found that our work scored six out of seven, which is 86% compared to the work of the other institutions. And these were the parameters under which we scored them. Namely, the number of brain views which are available, interactivity, the labeling, the animation, Java or other technologies required, internet connectivity requirement and accessibility. The only place that we lacked was it did not have animation. So that's why we scored 6 out of 7. Now let me show you what exactly is this program and how it works. So this is the first of the files and as you can see the lines have been superimposed on the societal media here and all these numbers are hyperlinked. So let's say you want to study what are the structures of the brain at the level of 240 millimeters from the scalp surface. So you click on it and it will take us to 240 millimeters from the scalp surface there. And we can see all the structures which are labeled here. We can see the comments and then we click on the top and it will take us back. Similarly, if we were to click on 100 millimeters, the moment the cursor becomes a hand, we click on it, it takes us to 100 millimeters. We see all the structures, 100 millimeters from the scalp surface, the transverse views, we see the comments, and then we can click on the top. And therefore, we can keep moving back and forth. This was the first of the views. The next one shows from 300 millimeters from the scalp surface, down to 560 millimeters from the scalp surface. So let's take a few representative views. This has taken us to 400 millimeters from the scalp surface that is deep down. Now we are seeing the level of the cerebellum and so on and so forth. And incidentally, you'll note that some of these structures have also been hyperlinked so that if you click on them, it'll take us to the appropriate text. And then by clicking back, it'll bring us back to the original video, uh, to the original screen. And finally, if you click top, it'll take us back to the thing. So these are the ways that we can move back and forth and we can study the brain right from the scalp surface to the base of the skull in 10 millimeter intervals, satellite view, uh, transverse views right from the top to the bottom because this is the best way to study the human brain. So now you are supposed to ask me, what is the utility of such a program? First, as you have noticed that it is, it eases the cognitive load on the student. It enhances the student's interest in neuroscience. It increases the retention of the subject and it also provides opportunities for individualized learning. What about the relevance to the clinicians and the radiologists? Most of the brain radiological images that this radiologist sees are either sagittal views, as you can see MRI scan, or they are axial views, a CT scan or an MRI. Of course, there are coronal views also, which we have not shown here. 
So in order to be able to interpret a transverse axial CT scan or a transverse axial MRI scan or to interpret the, the sagittal MRI scan, the student should know what are the structures which are visible in an axial view or, an, or, or a sagittal view. That is the whole purpose of knowing all the structures which are available and that's why this program was created. So this is another view how it is relevant to radiologists because nowadays all radiological images are DICOM images. So this is a slice screenshot of a DICOM image, digital imaging in communication in medicine. And this is an axial view and this is what you see in a DICOM image. By the way, this is a coronal view of the brain. So this is how it is relevant to not only students who are learning medical students but also to radiology residents and even to clinicians. The future relevance of this work is that it, this particular testing system has to be tested rigorously by means of a computer system usability questionnaire and it can be adopted by health science students, clinician educators, researchers and various other parameters and various other fields of expertise. So therefore the carry home message ladies and gentlemen is you have been able to see and use the program for yourself. You have seen the ease of use and its usefulness. You have seen the versatility of the program. You have seen how interactive it is in the form of two files, standalone files, which does not require internet connectivity. And I'm sure you felt the enthusiasm and we have opportunities to explore further applications. And this provides an easy method for us to teach a difficult subject to students. And, and you've also got an opportunity to see some of the initiatives by the National Library of Medicine, Bethesda, Maryland, National Institute of Health. The workers, the authors, gratefully acknowledge the contributions of the National Center of Biotechnology Information, National Library of Medicine, National Institute of Health, Bethesda, Maryland. And these are our literature references. And thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Have a nice day.